This podcast series is made possible thanks to the generous support of the Cooperative of American Physicians. Physician founded and physician governed, CAP provides superior medical malpractice coverage and solutions to more than 12,500 California physicians and helps them realize professional and personal success. Upon joining CAP, members receive risk management services, claim support, and a dedicated in-house defense firm, practice management resources, and so much more. CAP has been a long-standing premier LACMA partner and continues to support our members every day. To learn more, visit capphysicians.com. That's capphysicians.com. Welcome to this edition of Clear as Mud, the podcast dedicated to bringing clarity to medicine. I'm your host for this episode, Dr. Jeffrey Lee, the president of the LA County Medical Association. Greetings. Um, we have uh, Assemblymember uh, Rendon. Thank you for joining us today. Um, want to uh, uh, welcome you and uh, ask you to to tell our members, our physician members, a little bit about your district. Cool, great. Uh, first of all, great to be here. Uh, my district is 63rd Assembly District, Southeast Los Angeles County. It's a district that's very close to the port of Long Beach, very close to the port of Los Angeles, intersected by a lot of freeways, and I think suffers a lot of the sort of attendant health effects of, of, uh, of pollution, uh, both air pollution as well as um, a lot of uh, uh, lack of access to parks and those types of things. We're, I think, the second youngest district in the state. A lot of kids uh, mm. in the district. What we're lacking is park space. Uh, a lot of my work along the LA River and the redevelopment of the Los Angeles River, revitalization of the Los Angeles River is a, a direct result of that. Um, I have nine cities, um, eight in their entirety. Um, they tend to be small cities, very industrial, overwhelmingly Latino, and uh, it's a great, great sense of community in my district. Gotcha. Uh, what are your priorities as far as health care is concerned for this year? As far as health care, um, obviously we're, we're getting closer and closer to having all, Californian, all Californians covered. We're getting closer and closer to that, to that goal. It's something that, as somebody who worked in uh, early childhood education and, and Head Start for about 20 years, I understand how important... Uh, medical coverage is particularly for kids mm-hmm. in that instance. Um, preventative health care in particular is something that we want to make sure that uh, that everybody has access to. Um, you know, the past couple of years have been obviously kind of traumatic as far as COVID is concerned. Uh, how has the pandemic affected your understanding of health care and health care issues as it pertains to, to uh, your constituents? Well, I think in general, uh, I've sort of begin to understand how incredibly fragile so many aspects of our society are, whether it's schools, you know, all the way down the line, our, our public health care, our, our health care system uh, is a, a system that is also fragile, but also quite resilient. Um, and I think in the same way that my 10 years in public office have uh, helped me to realize that when people talk about the government, it's mm-hmm. actually comprised of people people who make great personal sacrifices to do the work they do. And in the healthcare space, it's the same thing. It's not um, you know, healthcare as, a, as an abstraction. It's actually people getting up every morning or every afternoon to work the night shift uh, and going in and, and, and doing their jobs and jobs that, you know, that, that help our overall society in a very real and meaningful way. So I think it's helped to make it less abstract for me uh, mm-hmm. and help me to sort of think about all of our healthcare professionals, as as individuals with families who have the same concerns that uh, that I have. Yeah, I, I I know many physicians in the in the throughout the pandemic, but especially in the beginning, they were concerned not necessarily I mean for their own health, but also for the con, uh, concern that they might bring COVID home and infect yeah. their own families and so on. I mean, they wanted to healthcare to to help people, uh, but not necessarily sacrifice their own family in the process. So I, I know that that was a a major concern. Hey, going back, you mentioned early education. Tell us a little bit about how you made that jump into um, your role now as an elected member. Sure. I was running early childhood education organizations for about 20 years, uh, mostly in, in, in southeast Los Angeles County, um, uh, s- s- some federally funded Head Start, some state preschool and 
uh, state infants and toddler programs. There's significant budget cuts here, uh, made here in Sacramento, again, by real people. Mm -hmm. Um, And when I came here to talk to real people about why they were cutting uh, our programs, programs that not only uh, ensured that that parents could go to work, programs that not only ensured that kids had two meals a day, uh, but that kids had the socialization that they needed and all of, all of those uh, incredible things that we were offering. Um, it occurred to me that there weren't a lot of people with, with an early childhood education perspective. Um, I was part of a collaborative of, uh, of early childhood educators who uh, became sort of politicized around the budget cuts. Holly Mitchell, who's now on the LA County Board of Supervisors, uh, was the first of us, the first of our group to run for office. I followed her. Uh, Sydney Comlogger was mm. also part of that group. Ended up in the Senate. Go oh, Kevin McCarty, um, who was uh, <laughs> doing advocacy in early childhood education up here, uh, uh, was the fourth. So now there's now, now the the the, pers- the early childhood education perspective is is well represented, not only in the legislature uh, but also on the LA County Board of Supervisors and soon in Congress with Sydney Comlogger. Gotcha. Well, that's I, that's really fascinating to hear about how kind of your little core group of of friends kind of rose up to do that. We that's all some, did okay, I guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's something that I, I I think about physicians too. I, many of us want to see change and improvement in how things work. And do you have any words of advice to physicians to get involved in? Well, in that? yeah. I mean, the fact that you're here in Sacramento is a lot. I mean, that that means a lot. I mean, you're doing the same thing that I did. Uh, that I came. Uh, to, to, to Sacramento to advocate for advocate for issues that were important to me for issues that were important back home um, I in general I say that the best way to talk a uh, huge state I'm you know 400 miles from my home right now uh, vast geographies he, vast economy a very varied economy I think the best way to talk to people is uh, to make it as local as possible um, I think too often when we advocate for the things that we're interested in, we talk in terms of, you know, there's X number of millions of dollars, billions of dollars and millions of people and this and that. That's cool. And that's important. That's part of the picture. But the most, um, the thing that you can say, sorry, my dad just learned how to text. Um, <laughs> the thing you can say that'll most catch people's attention, particularly from from the perspective of someone who's 400 miles from home is to is to bring someone from the district or talk about someone from the district to say, hey, I represent, you know, I I work in this, the gentleman outside, and I'm so sorry, I forgot his name, gave me my booster shot. Um, th- that's not very abstract, right? That's, mm-hmm. that's very real. Sure. And the more you can say, like, you know, I do this in Bell, I do this in Bell Gardens, or if you're talking to a Megan Dolly to say, I do this in Reading. Um, the more real you can make it to people, the less abstract you can make it, the more you're going to catch their attention. Well, thank you, uh, Assemblymember Renton. And uh, want to, again, thank you for being generous with your time. Cool. No problem. All thank right. you.